I'm going to walk through some of the sample code from the course site to explain some details about tone production in the Arduino. Let's go to the site here. There's a section in lecture sample code that has a series of short, short sketches, and we're going to go to the sound section and look at the first example called tones. I'm just going to uh, copy that text here, and I have in the other tab a Tinkercad sketch that has a Arduino with a piezo speaker attached via resistor to digital pin 5. So I'll, I'll paste that in, and then we'll give it a quick listen. And we hear a low pitch and a high pitch with the short sounds in between them. There some, there's some clicking. That's really an artifact of Tinkercad simulation and won't be exactly the same on a physical Arduino. So let's look at the code. The, it starts out with this constant speaker pin, which declares a, some, a, a name for the pin 5 for our, so we can read the program. I do recommend using this kind of construction. And then we'll notice that the setup function is empty. The tone function itself configures the output to the pin to an output, so we don't need a separate pin mode function here. There are the first tone uh, function call uh, has the speaker pin and then a 440 for a 440 hertz pitch. Then there's a delay of a second, which allows the hardware to continue playing that square wave pitch uh, for that duration. The no tone function will turn off the sound and needs the same pin number that you gave to tone. Then that will delay for a second of silence. And then the third tone, I'm sorry, the second tone declaration here, uh, invocation, uh, uses a, a pitch of 660 hertz for a second. So those are chosen as musical pitches. 440 is the definition of an A4, sometimes called concert A. It's a common orchestral tuning pitch. And in the Western equal temperament, 12-tone temperament scale, it's the only set of precisely uh, valued tones. Everything else has some, some uh, fractional value. The second pitch here is 660, which is what's known as a, a perfect fifth using a pure three halves ratio which is a particular intonation called just intonation. It's a common uh, ratio that is used by musicians, especially singers and other instrumental players, who uh, are taught to play that, that particular tuning for a fifth to get a really lovely open fifth kind of sound against the lower pitch. It doesn't exactly correspond to the piano pitches. It's slightly wider. And the piano fifth is actually slightly inharmonic and doesn't, it's very slightly jarring. It doesn't quite sound together. And mostly this is to say that there's a variety of different pitch tuning systems, none of which are exactly the same, and each produces a slightly different musical outcome. So this is every one of these is an approximation. Let's go to the second example now, which takes a very different approach. So bit bang two tone, and let's just give that a whirl. Now in this case, there is no tone function. So let's just hear what this sounds like. So what we're hearing is, is the superposition of two sounds along with some artifacting. If you look at what's going on in here is that the Arduino program is using digital write to directly create an audio signal by turning the output on and off at a very high rate. So in this case, we are using digital write. We do need a pin mode in the setup to configure that for output. And then if we look at what's happening inside of loop, the loop function is designed to run as fast as possible. And every time that it starts, it reads the microsecond clock which is a 32-bit number, and uh, stores it into now, this variable. And then it, it uses a little bit of logic to create two square waves. The microsecond clock, the percent sign is a modulo operator. So it's divided by 2274, and the remainder is the value of the modulo. That's compared against 1136, so that for half of the period from 0 to 2273, the waveform will be off, and the other half it'll be on. Similarly, for the second square two, there's a, a different divisor, but the same logic. It creates a square wave of, of a different P pitch. If we look down at the digital right, there's a caret operator, which is a bitwise exclusive OR. This depends upon the fact that the Boolean is actually either a zero or one. And so the exclusive OR has the property that it's true when the inputs are different. So a zero and a zero produces a zero. A one and a one produces a zero, but then zero one or one zero produces a one. It's a way of superimposing two square waves or two digital waveforms to produce a composite signal. Now, let's look at these actual divisors. If you take uh, 2274 microseconds and you divide that by one or one by that, it's reciprocal. Then what we see is that the period of that is actually 400, that period produces a 439.75 and some fraction hertz signal. 
It's not exactly at A4, it's close, but not quite right. And this is mostly a consequence of the fact that we have a fixed 16 megahertz clock that is divided down by integer division hardware uh, to produce some rate. And there's only certain rates that are available. So when you ask the tone function for 440, internally it's doing some approximation to find the closest divisor and then actually producing a pitch that is slightly off. It's just a consequence of having integer-based hardware. Similarly, the second pitch here is very close to that E5 um, at uh, that perfect fifth above the lower tone. So that's a bit-banging approach, and that can be used to generate quite complex waveforms on a real Arduino that has the bandwidth to spare. One thing to note here is that because the microsecond clock is being used, the, the, the execution of this loop is, is, uh, can vary in time. There can be some jitter, we call it, in terms of variation of time of the, of the loop, and the outcome should be very, very similar. It's using the hardware clock to determine the timing. So even if there's some other operations that might cause the timing to vary slightly, the, because the hardware is the reference and is being divided down, the actual waveform might have some subtle jitter where the different periods are slightly different from cycle to cycle, but the overall frequency will be very stable and consistent. Let's go to the third example now, uh, which is called scale, and it goes back to using the tone function. So uh, once again it has tone, let's just hear what this sounds like. So what we're seeing here is uh, a two octave chromatic scale. So let's look at the code. Um, once again, tone is used. There's no pin mode in setup. Setup is blank. So we have this variable frequency, freak, which is a float variable, and it starts with a value of 440. That's our concert A4. Then we have a loop that will loop 24 times. And uh, on each time, it will generate a pitch on the speaker, delay for 200 milliseconds. And then there's a multiplier, freak equals freak times 1.0595. That's approximately the value of 2 to the uh, 1 twelfth. That number multiplied by itself 12 times equals 2. And basically this expresses the idea of an equal temperament scale where each semitone is a fixed ratio of the semitone below it, but every 12 semitones is an octave. In musical terms, going from A4 to A5, an octave is a doubling of frequency. So 440 at A4 is 880 at A5. So this uh, performs the arithmetic on each cycle to simply compute the next semitone in the sequence as it walks up that chromatic scale. And then finally it finishes with a no tone to give us a second of silence in between the scales. So in summary, the tone function is useful for causing the hardware to produce a square wave while something else happens. We're not really taking advantage of the fact that the, computer, that the, the CPU is free, we're just delaying that interval, but we could actually have a lot of other computation happen while that pitch continues to come out. And then we've looked a little bit at these various tuning systems to see that there are, are different schemes for producing the ratios of pitches that form musical notes.